And um, I also thank the ranking member. Uh, we're in the fourth year of this crisis, unfortunately. And um, I do want to thank Elliot Engel and this committee uh, three years ago for trying to get us focused and trying to push the administration and all of us uh, to take more concerted action. And I guess the frustration that we have is that uh, the United States and the international community continue to struggle with an issue that shouldn't have been such a struggle, which is the delivery of aid to Syrians most in need. Uh, and the problem started with delivery of aid uh, through the regime rather than to the areas uh, most in need. And we've solved some of that problem. Uh, but unfortunately, men, women, children have been besieged by the Assad regime now uh, for about a year in many of these cities. And others remain isolated due to the heavy fighting between the regime and, um, and opposition groups. Uh, and uh, a third faction now, a faction that wasn't in this when we started, uh, and that was the terrorist organizations, the, the jihadists who came in from outside of the country. Uh, and this was why it was important early on to have heeded the advice of Elliot Engel and others. Um, for the administration to have heeded the advice and uh, gotten uh, weaponry to the Free Syrian Army. Now we are doing that, but we are not doing it to the extent necessary, and we have not been doing it to the extent necessary. And now we have uh, something that uh, Assad's uh, regime has the audacity to uh, implement, this kneel or starve campaign. So the problem is not new. The UN's delivery of aid solely through areas controlled by the Assad, Assad regime has been the primary obstacle early on to ensuring the delivery of aid were needed most. The UN's obligations in this regard have recently been debated legally uh, by legal experts. Uh, but it is clear that the UN could have much more flexibility if Russia would allow it. So it is time to think of new solutions. The House Foreign Affairs Committee last month passed unanimously House Resolution 520, which states that the United Nations needs to find new ways of delivering that aid, including through private partners, uh, to the Syrian people who are being besieged. And I am encouraged, finally, I am encouraged that Secretary Kerry is now calling for the same. And the United States has provided now $1.7 billion in humanitarian aid in response to this crisis over the last three, and I guess it is about three and a half years, um, through the U.N. Our concern for the Syrian people and our stewardship of these taxpayer dollars requires that we ensure the intended delivery of this system the assistance it funds. We need to be much more emphatic about that. And alarmingly, the Assad regime has not stopped at blocking aid, but its forces routinely target humanitarian workers and facilities, especially those providing medical care to suffering Syrians. They target them with snipers. They have they've killed doctors. They target them with shelling and, of course, as you are reading, with barrel bombs. And somebody needs to say something more about the additional chemical attacks, uh, some 14 attacks, 13 or 14, that have been cataloged by the French government. It is time that our government speak out about, again, the use of chemical weapons on those civilians. Various credible sources have, been, have reported uh, that uh, these barrel bombs have, in fact, been filled with weaponized chlorine in recent weeks, despite the regime's alleged commitment to cease all chemical weapons attacks. Uh, we, um, it's my intent to write a letter to the President asking what he's going to do about this, and I would urge any member of this committee to join me in that, in that letter. And I welcome our esteemed panelists today, who I suspect will be able to attest to many of these challenges, especially the regime's attacks against medical personnel and facilities and Dr. Shah Lowell, a close friend of the committee and president of the Syrian American Medical Society of SAMS, uh, joins us today after recently returning from yet another trip to Syria where he personally provided aid and witnessed unspeakable horrors. He, along with others in the Syrian American community, have contributed heroically to the American and international response to this 
humanitarian disaster. And I applaud their efforts and I encourage the administration and the UN to work more closely with Syrian American groups. That, that is where we should be moving the aid, through Syrian American groups. Frankly, if we moved all our aid through Syrian American groups, to me, that would be the ideal solution. I have communicated that to the administration. That ensures that our assistance reaches those Syrians who most need it. And thank you.